Hi, my name is Jenna. I play the cello. My name is Louis. I play viola. My name is Crystal. I play the violin. Heidi, violin. We'd love to get started today with a little bit of humor. We're going to play a movement from a string quartet by Franz Joseph Haydn that has the nickname, The Joke. Thank you so very much. I'd like to take a quick poll. Raise your hand if you've ever attended a classical music concert. Nice. OK, now, here is the moment of truth. Raise your hand if you have ever found yourself bored during a classical music concert. <laughs> right. OK. So. Let us now imagine that we will attend a concert together. We have to be sure that we follow the rules. We make sure we are properly dressed up for the occasion. We make sure to read the program notes because we know that the artists will not be talking about the music they're going to perform. We are absolutely certain that we do not clap in between movements of a piece, because we do not want any stern glances from our fellow audience members. This is a big no-no. We sit in silence for over two hours, listening to music that we may or may not be familiar with. And we leave the concert hall feeling uplifted by the beautiful music that we've heard. But was there a missed opportunity here? Could there have been more to our experience? In 2010, the four of us came together with the belief 
that this thing that's happening here, this live music, this art that we're creating together on stage could have a much larger impact. We wanted to experiment and explore the possibilities for what a string quartet could do. We wanted to expand access, change the environment, and manipulate the elements. What this all really boils down to is a large ongoing experiment for us. Now I should say that these ideas are not new. This is part of an ongoing movement and the classical music scene to connect with audiences as they have evolved over time. So how are we experimenting and what are we doing differently? After a lifetime of both attending concerts and performing them, um, we have noticed that there is this invisible wall that acts as a barrier between performer and audience. <laughs> now, you probably all know what I mean here. This feeling that I'm standing up here and you're standing down there. That I am on stage giving you this beautiful gift that I have painstakingly practiced for hours and hours just for you. And we also have this understanding that when given your cue, you will show me your appreciation with polite applause. <laughs> well, breaking down this wall is actually pretty simple. It can be done simply by us just coming on stage and introducing ourselves or talking about our instruments. But what if we went further than that? Sir, what's your name? Rick. Rick. Hi, Rick. Nice to meet you. I'm Lewis. Yes. How's your day going? Just wonderful. Great. Um, I have a bit of an odd question for you, so indulge me. Um, if you recall, a few minutes ago, we played Haydn's quartet nicknamed The Joke. Now, after hearing that music, if you could associate that with any animal, <laughs> what would that animal be? Raccoon, I'm hearing other answers, but that's great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so look what just happened. We have an exchange of energy. And here's where the real opportunity lies. We're no longer just creating something for you. We're creating it together. So what happens when we invite our audience to participate in this creative process? Like Lewis said, there's an exchange. There's ideas being passed back and forth. We're kind of getting to know one another. You guys kind of got to know one another just kind of sharing animal names. <laughs> and so when that energy and I, those ideas are passed back and forth, we feed off of each other. And it really changes how we play. Now, this is easier to do when we break some of the rules that Crystal was talking about. Not every performance, and depending on the setting, but not every performance needs to be a formal affair. I don't know, Louis, if I've ever seen you wear a tuxedo, come to think of it. So, and I don't think he's sad about that. Um, we like to talk to our audiences. We don't often write program notes, but we sit down as a quartet and we think about the audience we're about to play for, and we say, okay, what would be information that's relevant and something they can grab onto that will make the listening experience more meaningful. We invite our audience to clap whenever they feel like it. Um, oh, well, thank you. We, we, we don't want anyone to stifle the joy or appreciation they're feeling. And in reality, if, if you tell us that you like something, it makes us feel good and we'll probably play better in tune. <laughs> so what Crystal also mentioned that we are trying to expand access. And this breaking down of the wall happens a lot easier in certain situations. We have played many, many different places. It's amazing where you can put a quartet, because all you really need for us is four chairs. So we have played, of course, in a lot of churches and concert halls, but we've also played in many, many schools, retirement um, communities. Um, hospitals, the children's hospital here, the veterans hospital, uh, juvenile detention centers. We recently played at a temporary housing facility for young immigrants. 
And what all of these have in common is that we're taking ourselves and we're putting ourselves in an already existing community. And so sometimes that mean, means there's no wall at all because we're coming in as guests and we're posing a question. We're saying, can we come in and be a part of your community for just a little bit and share something with you and create this experience? And that is where we have found we have the greatest impact. And how do we measure this impact? Well, really, it's just it's a collection of experiences that we've had. For several years, we've visited a memory care facility at a local retirement home. Now, most of these patients don't remember our last visit, nor did they usually remember their own names. But recently, we had a very powerful experience. We had brought a Broadway medley of tunes to play for these patients, and all of them were singing along every word perfectly. When we played in the juvenile detention center recently, we were in their gym and they were all on the floor and we were right there on the floor in front of them and we thought, what can we play? What can we say that's going to really relate to them? And so what we did is we, we talked about the different roles that the voices in a string quartet have. And then we posed that question to them, how does this relate to you and your roles in your families and your communities? And we had an awesome exchange. As Heidi mentioned, we play for kids all the time in every setting possible, whether it be a library, a cafeteria, a gymnasium, a cafetorium, whatever. Um, and playing assemblies is always a lot of fun. There's nothing better than seeing kids eagerly raising their hands, just wanting to share with us how the music we played made them feel, or perhaps making a deeper connection to what they listened to. Uh, in our last concert at a retirement community, where we've actually played for several years, so we've developed some good friendships, um, a woman approached me, and I could tell that she had been pretty moved, and she just said, I just want to thank you. My daughter uh, passed away last year, and she was a violinist, and it's through music that I am able to connect with her. And so she would have had that meaningful experience without sharing it with me, but because she shared it with me, then that was, that was, I was able to have that experience with her. So you see, this perfor live performance gives us this opportunity to ask questions. What do you think? How do you feel? Because it matters to us, and it's going to affect how we create what's happening on stage. As we leave you today, we would love to show you this mission in action. A few years ago, we met Steve Prutzman, the founder of Azure Family Concerts, which is a series tailored to children and young adults on the autism spectrum. Steve invited us to play in one of these shows in California, and we got to see firsthand how meaningful the experience was for all the families in the audience. And we personally were so inspired that we knew we had to start an Azure Family Concert series in Arizona. So the video you're about to see is actually from our very first Azure show here. Um, we hope that you're able to see how we're constantly striving to build more and more personal connections and relationships with our audience. Now I want to share with you something that we start every Azure show by saying. Today, we only have one rule, and that's that there are no rules. I began uh, our Azure series in the Bay Area where I live. These are tailored events for families, whereby families could come together, enjoy some good music, and where um, they wouldn't have to worry about the behaviors of their, their, their kids. Kids with severe autism uh, have uh, vocalizations or, or uncontrollable body movements, impulse control issues, um, have a hard time sitting still, 
and so on. And what we try to do is um, make this as friendly environment for those, those differences and actually even welcome those differences. We always try to connect with our community and they're part of our community and we want to make, we want to make their lives happy. One thing that we're really focusing on is using music as a vehicle for public service. And uh, by doing these concerts, this is a part of our community that is usually not served by musicians. And I, I think this is part of our responsibility about being a quartet is to make concerts available to all types of people, not just the typical concert goer. This is just equally about the parents as it is about the children. I mean, this is a great opportunity for the kids to enjoy themselves and to express themselves in any way they see fit, but for the parents to get a moment to just sit back and um, allow their kids to move around and vocalize and not feel worried about it. And yeah. they can just also enjoy the live music and enjoy a, a day out with their family. Yes, yes. There actually hasn't been a lot of events like this, and I'm glad to see that they're starting them. Um, we've always felt that there should, needs, needed to be something where that would be appropriate for Hunter to be able to go and enjoy a concert. And so this is, this is a great program that we're excited about. It's a break for parents, and it's a ton of fun for the kids. And really, I mean, when we say all behaviors welcome, we mean it. You don't have to feel apprehensive that anyone is, is judging you or your kids. And so it's just a place where you can relax and have fun and have a positive experience with your child. The quality of our lives are measured by the quality of the moments of our lives. And we have a finite number of moments with our kids and we should try to enjoy those moments to the best of our abilities. And so this provides a platform, an area, an arena, where families can relax and enjoy music together. Just all around a great day, a great time. Um, and, you know, was there for 45 minutes and it seems to capture everybody's attention. Nobody really got up or walked away. So, um, and I was a little worried about the time, but it worked really well. So, you know, overall great experience. I mean, we're leaving happy. <laughs> That's a good thing. Mm -hmm.